I'm, I'm very comfortable going pose to pose. Uh, I think I think I brought enough to improve. I think I'm. Uh, I don't think he's he's going to be as dominant from the side against me. And uh, despite what a lot of people may think, I don't think he's going to be a dominant from the back against me either. And a lot of the front shots, I think I'll take. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm very comfortable. Uh, All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story, I want to talk about Wesley Vissers. Wesley Vissers, to me, has some of the most impressive physique updates that I've seen so far from any of the classic physique competitors in this lineup. From a conditioning standpoint, Wesley Vissers looks absolutely shredded to the bone, and I can't stress enough how impressive and how improved I think Wesley really looks here. The two biggest criticisms that I've seen of Wesley so far for his pro career were the size of his legs, which he hasn't shown much of yet, and his conditioning. Wesley even said that after one of his pro shows, the judges told him that he needs to focus more on conditioning. Wesley took kind of an old school approach to conditioning because he thought that was more what classic physique was supposed to be. And he said, judges specifically told him, you need to come in with better conditioning. And I really think that Wesley has listened to that criticism. And he's going to bring, I honestly think this is going to be the best version of Wesley that we've ever seen on a pro bodybuilding, pro classic physique stage, I should say. I mean, the shape he's in is ridiculous. And this picture that he posted, I wanted to show this just to show you can see so much condition in this picture. The striations in his pecs look unreal. The roundness and fullness of his shoulders unreal the vascularity in his arms unreal and we know that Wesley also has a great shape so if he brings this next level conditioning like we've never seen from Wesley before I think Wesley has a real shot at cracking the top six at the Olympia this year or at least cracking the top 10 I think cracking the top 10 is probably Wesley's goal here so let's go back and look for a second at Wesley Visser's appearance at the Arnold Classic in 2019 this was the appearance where Wesley's hype train kind of ran out of steam Wesley had a ton of hype up until around that show and if you look at his posing routine here you can clearly see that Wesley is not anywhere near the shape that he's in right now and keep in mind he's still got two weeks to drop water um, and really lean out but you can tell looking back at this posing video Wesley was certainly off at that Arnold Classic and I think it's clear to see he has made significant improvements to his physique and I think he's going to be really dangerous at the Olympia this year now the big thing that we have not seen I have yet to see Wesley post an update of his legs whether his legs have improved from a size standpoint or not that's going to be the big question mark because we have not really seen that yet but from a conditioning standpoint, I really believe that Wesley will have really brought it together um, in bringing a next level version of himself. This is Wesley Visser's 2.0, and I'm excited to see what he brings to the Olympia stage this year. Now, speaking of classic physique, Chris Bumstead um, put up a pretty ominous, confident post on his Instagram today. So he said in the caption of this picture, he took the best progress pictures he has ever taken in his life this morning at, well, now we're like one and a half weeks out. And he says they will not be going on the gram. And this is what I want you guys to pay attention to. They will not be going on the gram. But I need to take a moment to express how grateful I am to have this opportunity in front of me. It's the process you have to be in love with if you want to go far in life. And I have been appreciating every damn day of this journey. Now, this leads me into the conspiracy theory that I've been hearing from several people in the comment sections. I've seen people message me this. I've seen people comment this. A lot of people think that Chris Bumstead is intentionally posting older pictures on his Instagram. And I've seen Ian Vier, his coach um, and training partner, kind of co-sign this earlier in his Olympia prep that he was posting older pictures. So when we're comparing how Breon has been looking lately to how Chris has been looking lately, is it possible that Chris is intentionally posting pictures from earlier in his prep and he's not really showing us how he's looking right now close to the Olympia. And the fact that he's saying in this caption that he took the best progress pictures he's ever taken, but he's not going to post them, I think would lean in that direction. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think Chris is posting old physique updates, maybe to throw off the, com the, com the competition, the fans? I don't know. Um, but Ian Vier posted this on his Instagram story, a video of Chris training where Chris looks like he's in really, really good shape. He's grainy, he's dry, he's vascular. Was this a recent picture? And Ian's caption on that video um, was, this ain't 2017, 2018, or 2019. This is a whole new 
animal. And speaking of Ian, he also said this a couple days ago, which a lot of people sent to me on his Q&A um, addressing Breon Ainsley. So Ian was asked, what do you think about Breon's comments on Fuad's podcast about why Chris beat him? And Ian responds and says, I understand it's hard for him to grasp the reality. He can be at 100% and Chris can be at 75% and still lose. Not all men are created equally. Now, I didn't see Fuad's podcast, but I'm sure um, he's referring to whatever excuse Breon made for losing to Chris. But the fact of the matter is Chris was sick right before last year's Mr. Olympia. He was off. He even said he was off. He said his conditioning was off. He didn't look how he wanted to look. And Chris still won that Olympia this year. Chris has no health problems. Chris has no injuries. Chris is full steam ahead into defending his title. So logic would tell you that he's going to look better than he looked last year. So does does Ian's word here hold some weight? I was actually looking back at some video of Chris from last year's Mr. Olympia, and he really wasn't in the best shape. He de- I don't think he was the best. He, I don't think he was the most ripped guy in that lineup. Um, but his shape was so good. His structure was so good. He looked so classic. Even though he was a little bit off, he still won the show. And that's what Ian is referring to here. And if this year he's not off and he nails it 100%, he dials it in, can he be beaten by Breon no matter how conditioned Breon is if Chris is really at 100%? That is the question. And also I wanted to mention that I've been blessed to be receiving a lot of sponsorships and endorsements lately on this channel. And I really didn't realize how many opportunities were out there. Um, And how many opportunities I've been missing out on over the years by not replying to these emails and not accepting any sponsorship. So the sponsor of today's video, finally, is Keeps. You guys have probably seen Keeps sponsor a lot of YouTube videos, so you're not a real YouTuber (laughs) until you've gotten the Keeps sponsorship. So shout out to Keeps. All right, guys, so huge shout out to Keeps for sponsoring today's video. Keeps, did you know that two out of every three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. Do not wait. Get treated from home with Keeps. You used to have to go to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription. Now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get hair loss medication delivered right to your door. They make it easy and deliver your medication every three months so you can say goodbye to pharmacy checkout lines and awkward doctor visits. Now, the great thing about Keeps is the price because Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA-approved hair loss products out there. You may have tried them before, but probably never for the price that Keeps offers them. Prevention is key. Keeps treatments take up to four to six months or more to see results, so it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and why nearly 100,000 men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. If you are ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to Keeps.com slash NSP. That's Keeps.com slash NSP. Or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. 50 percent off. We're not talking about a measly 10, 20, 25 percent, a full 50 percent off your first order from keeps.com with keeps.com slash NSP. Head over there now, support the channel. Now, next up in the news, this is an interesting one, and I really want to get your guys' opinion on this. Serban Anatoly with a huge straight barbell curl. So this is a strict curl story, kind of. This was done in competition But it wasn't necessarily done strict. It wasn't done up against the wall. It wasn't done up against a strict curl platform. It was done just standing there doing the bicep curl, but it was still counted officially in competition. 107.5 kgs, 237 pounds. The current world record in the strict curl is 113 kgs, 249 pounds. So this is extremely close to that record. Now, even though he's not up against the wall here, He does use extremely strict form, but you can see his back does have a little bit of sway to it during that movement. Now, I've competed in probably 20, 25 different strict curl meets, and at different meets, they've done it differently. Some meets, um, they had you up against the wall. Some meets, they didn't, um, but they counted both. So here's my question to you guys. If someone were to break the strict curl world record without having their back up against the wall, but it was in competition like this, so in this competition, they're still looking for does your back sway excessively? They're still looking for any crazy jerking or crazy movement of your shoulders, um, you know, like jerking your arms, jerking your back. They're still looking for that, and they still won't count the lift if it looks super cheat curlish. Should they count it if it's done like this? Would you count it? 
Does a strict curl have to be up against the wall, or could it just be a standing barbell curl with really strict form? I want to hear your guys' opinion in the comment section down below. Now, next up in the news, does the Mr. Olympia competition, do the people behind the Olympia know something that we don't know? They've been sharing official posters um, with the caption, who you got? So before I get into this story, comment in the comment section below your Olympia predictions for the 2020 Mr. Olympia. I'm very curious to hear who you guys have winning. Give me your top three. Give me your top six. Comment that down below. But in the official poster, they have Heidi Chupin dead center amongst Dexter Jackson, Rolly Winkler, William Bonac, Big Rami, and up front, they've got Brandon Curry and Phil Heath, and they also have another advertisement for the 2020 Olympia pay-per-view, which will be on olympiaproductions.com for around $60 if you purchase it after December 8th. Now, that pay-per-view has been another huge point of discussion, and I've seen a lot of you guys were not happy about that price. So let me know in the comment section below also, will you be buying the Olympia for $50 or $60, depending on whether or not you pre-order it. If you pre-order it, it's $50. If you buy it the day of, it's $60. Is that a good price? Are you willing to pay that, or do you think that is excessive? Let me know in the comment section below. But getting into the story here, they've got Hadi Chupin dead center of that poster. So is there something that they know that we don't as far as Hadi being able to get here on his visa? I certainly think it would be weird for them to put Hadi in the center of that poster if they did not know for sure that he was competing, especially this close to the show. I mean, Hadi, he's dead center of their poster. Um, and then Sean Ray, who is still doing the official commentary for the show despite um, people protesting that, he posted a picture the same day as this poster was posted saying, looking forward to the return of the People's Champion December 17th through the 20th at the Mr. Olympia, Hadi Chupin, the Persian Wolf, watch live on pay-per-view. And I know I've talked a lot about Hadi lately, and that's just because I want to see this lineup be one of the most competitive lineups in Olympia history. And I think if Hadi's not able to get there, it's not going to be as competitive as it should be. Hadi brings a level of conditioning that raises the bar for every other competitor because if Hadi comes in with that shape like he had last year and all these other guys don't, if Phil Heath doesn't, if Big Rami doesn't, he's going to start beating those guys. So if they know Hadi is coming, they're going to have to up their game to pass up him and his conditioning. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today, I wanted to share this clip for you guys from the Mr. Olympia Instagram page where they interviewed Brandon Curry, my buddy actually, David Bay, has been running the uh, Mr. Olympia Instagram. He's done a fantastic job over there. Dave, if you're watching this, you deserve a raise, bro. So Dave was interviewing Brandon, and he got some interesting insight out of Brandon about Phil Heath's comeback that you guys might not expect. Um, Brandon actually wants Phil to come back at his best because he does not want everybody to say that Brandon only beat Phil because Phil was off. Brandon wants to beat Phil at his best, and he believes that he can do it. So I'm going to leave you guys with this clip of Brandon discussing the return of Phil Heath. And Sean and I really had a kind of a, a toss-up when we go pose for pose between you and Phil and that it was really going to come down to conditioning. Do you feel comfortable? Um, I mean, when we talk front double bicep structurally, I think in, in front lat spread, a lot of people would give you the advantage. Um, Phil is, is, is strong in his side shots and the back shots. Um, Phil's double bicep obviously is, is one of the greatest of all time, but uh, I think most people would argue that your uh, rear lat spread has a little bit more V taper. Uh, abdominals, most people are giving that one to you. Most muscular, Phil's class, most muscular has is, is always been a strong point for him. Are, are you comfortable going pose for pose if you know the judges are going to break it down that far? I'm, I'm very comfortable going pose to pose. Uh, I, think, I think I brought enough to improve. I think I'm. Uh, I don't think he's he's gonna be as dominant from the side against me, and uh, despite what a lot of people may think, I don't think he's gonna be a dominant from the back against me either. And a lot of the front shots, I think I'll take. So, um, yeah, man, I'm I'm very comfortable, uh, very confident. I, I, I'm excited. I really, I'm like a, I'm like a kid. You know, Christmas Christmas Eve is coming. You know, so uh, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, you know, and it's 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 been an interesting narrative for this year's Olympia because usually there's uh, there's discussion about you know who's who has the opportunity to take out the champ. Um, like you said, you kind of have an underdog mentality with with Phil coming back, but there's a lot of uncertainty. You know whether we're going to see 
um, Phil come back at his best or whether Phil's coming back because we've seen bodybuilders come back after some time off. Um, you know, when Jay Cutler took 2012 off and came back in 2013, um, you know, for as, as, as great of a champion as Jay was, he wasn't quite as good as, as where he was previously. We saw him, uh, I think, finish in that sixth place spot. Um, and so it, a lot of people have this, this mindset that Phil coming back is, is, I think automatically they're thinking Phil, you know, 2011 or 2013, but you're coming back and what people are going to assume is an improved version of last year, but we really don't know what we're getting with Phil, if we're being perfectly honest. Is that something that's, that's in your head? Like just, you know, wondering what, what he's going to end up bringing? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm realistic. I'm realistic. I know, you know, coming back from like almost two years off is, uh, it can't be easy, you know, getting into the mindset, getting to the groove, getting back into the routine of doing the things that you need to do. Uh, you know, whatever complications it had, you know, that's got to weigh on, your, on, your, on, you know, your confidence a little bit. I mean, we're all human, right? So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, his mental state, you know, and how he's able to bounce back uh, from, uh, you know, losing the title in 2018. I mean, that's uh, it's not easy to do. Uh, it's, you know, my hat goes off to him for even attempting it. I'm very fortunate that he, you know, he, he has the confidence to come into the show and compete. So, uh, you know, hopefully he can bring uh, a, a decent package to compare because the last thing I want is to, you know, just everybody complain about how I just beat a Phil Heath that, you know, wasn't, you know, what they would call Phil Heath. So I hope he comes in well. That's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. As always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out.